After driving past the fish shacks in Pine Island Sound, I had to learn more about them. Thousands of people boat past these fish shacks every single day, but a very small percentage actually get the opportunity to go in. Today, we're one of the lucky ones, and this is going to be a great spot for lunch. Meet Matt Degata. He's a lifelong Floridian from generations of boating pedigree who's been fishing these waters since he could walk. Matt's dad and a group of buddies own one of the historic fish cabins of Charlotte Harbor. And today, he's invited us out for the grand tour. Hey, Matt. Hey, Drew, how you doing? Pretty good, man, you? Good, good to see you. Yeah, you too, thanks for having us out. Yeah, absolutely, let's go for a boat ride. I'm excited. I was born and raised here in Charlotte County, Florida. Spent a lot of my life growing up on these waters. Uh, we've been going to these fish shacks since I was a little kid. My dad's been going since he was a little kid. It's one of my favorite places in the world, so. The Charlotte Harbor Fish Shacks date back as far as the 1920s to the heyday of commercial fishing in these waters. Originally used as a place for fishermen to dry their nets, stay the night, keep supplies, or store their catch on ice without having to run all the way back to the processing plants in Punta Gorda. Eventually, the state of Florida outlawed building structures like these on the water, so now there are only a few out there. A handful in Charlotte Harbor and that bunch in Pine Island Sound now all listed on the National Register of Historic Places. They've been grandfathered in and passed down within the families that originally owned them. They can't be sold, rented, or used for anything that would generate a profit anymore. We got a TV, we got air conditioning out there. It's all generator powered, but uh, it's just glorified camping, really, and just enjoying a weekend full of fishing. When the tide is higher and we aren't loaded up with gear and crew, there's a shallow back way in that saves plenty of time in a boat like this. Instead, we traveled south on the ICW for a couple clicks before heading into more protected waters where we found Matt's shack among a few others. His originally belonged to the Odom family, but now it's owned by a group of childhood buddies, including the owner's great nephew and Matt's dad, Paul. We have arrived. They estimate it's been here since the 30s, but in 2004, they were forced to rebuild after all these shacks were wiped out by Hurricane Charlie. After the hurricane wiped these shacks out, the state has uh, satellite imagery of the original footprint of the shack, and they've made sure that you didn't put it sink an extra piling. Uh, right down to the piling. Right down to the piling. Our roof was was two feet longer than it originally was, and they made us cut it back. During the rebuild process, too, the shacks had to look like they did historically, too, so we couldn't modify them. They had to almost look identical to what it looked like before. Other than a little more shape, what would you change? And inside, it was a fisherman's dream. No glitz or glamour, just a kitchen to cook up your catch, a place to rest your head, and a beautiful bar table to swap stories of the ones you hauled in and the ones that got away. So after the hurricane, the, the shack was destroyed. They actually found the old stove about 100 yards that way. And uh, they found this piece of wood uh, in the mangroves. And my dad used to outline big fish they caught. That was a big mullet that they cast netted. And they found that piece and cut it out and hung it back up. And uh, everyone signs it. And they come by here, so if you guys want to sign it, feel free. A place to kick back after a long day of fishing when everyone else is headed back to port, it feels like the whole Gulf of Mexico is yours and yours alone. It's one of my best memories were, you know, fishing and camping out here with my dad and his buds and basically my whole life. I love it here. You know, some of my best memories are just fishing and before I was able to run the boat, we'd take that little kayak out and just go fish these cuts and catching a big shark off the dock here. Cool. The, the number one memory is uh, this is where I asked my wife to marry me. So it's my favorite place on the planet. See why. It was a tough place to leave, but I was grateful to Matt and the Silver Kings for opening up such a special spot for us to experience. After a long day on the water, a night at the races was in store. A great way to put an exclamation point on a great trip to Southwest Florida and wrap up my first season with Powerboat TV. Thanks for watching.